So now we're starting a new a new lila. It's called Bhakti or Gyan, which is better? Lord Chaitanya reveals the answer. Everywhere you go in India, when you preach in India amongst pious and religious people, they often they often argue, like our friend Mr. Vyas. He says, Oh, you know, bhakti is good, but <laughs> he's a Vaishnava. But ultimately you have to come to Gyan. Without Gyan, Bhakti is, there's no success. Gyan is much higher than Bhakti. <laughs> he argues like this. And there's a very common debate about this point. And this very significant argument, and the answer to this argument is given by Kesha Bharti, who is a sannyas guru of Lord Chaitanya. It's not very clear unless where this conversation went on because the setting so far in this chapter 9 is Jagannath Puri, the Sapuri Lila, and in Katwa, Lord Chaitanya met Kesha Bharati and took sannyas from him. Maybe he went on to Puri, can't say, but obviously it was probably in Puri this conversation. Nija Guru Sri Keshav Bharatirastan Bhakti Gyana Dui. Jigna Shiva Ekadhine. One day Mahaprabhu asked his sannyas guru, Kesha Bharati, about bhakti and jnana. Prabhu Bale jnana bhakti, duite ke bhara, vicharya ghosai kaha, tahakari dhada. Mahaprabhu inquired, O oh Gurudev, which is greater, jnana or bhakti? Oh Gosai, please consider and tell me conclusively. Vicharya Gosai. In the Bhagavad Gita, I believe it's chapter was it chapter fourteen, where uh, Arjuna asks the same question, which is the impersonal path or bhakti. You know that 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 question. He said which. And then what, and Krishna goes on to say that the path of impersonalism is very difficult. Klesha Dikatras Tesham. Isn't it Klesha Dikatras Tesham? Whatever, Tesham. Uh, he says that the path of Gyan is mu- very, very difficult. And so the same, this question is often asked. You see that Arjuna is asking Krishna, well, you're telling me, because Krishna just told him about Gyan and told him about the modes of nature and so many things, and then he's saying, which path is better, is it bhakti or gyan? And then Krishna says, the bhakti is superior, you know that? And he said, so the same, here's the same discussion, again, by Krishna's asking his guru. Lord Chaitanya is taking the role of a devotee. Takakshane bharati vichara kariman kahite lagila gora sundarera stan Bharati thought for a while, and then reply to Gorasunda. Katakshani Bharati Vichar Kariman Bharati Balaina Mani Vicharila Tatwa Sarahaiti Deki Vara Bhakti Ra Mahatwa Kesha Bharati said, after considering the topic, I have concluded that the glories of Bhakti are superior to all. So the answer to the question of Mahaprabhu is bhakti is superior. Then the next question is how so, why so, what's the proof? Why are you saying that? You're saying it. I asked the question, seeing you as guru, and the guru gave the answer and said, yes, bhakti is superior. Now, what is the, what, how did he substantiate his answer? Bharati balena tara nabuje vichar. Mahajana Pate Se Gamana Sabakar. Keshabhat replied, This is not my one man's answer. It's not my subjective viewpoint. This is the collective viewpoint of the greatest thinkers in the universe, beginning with Brahma, which we'll hear. So the, in other words, this argument is also given in the Bhagavad Gita when uh, Arjuna is glorifying Krishna. He says, not only am I accepting you as Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavasham, Parma Bhama. He says, Asita, Devala, Narada, all these great rishis, are also, they've also accepted you as a supreme, not just one friend who's your, an archer named Gandiva Raj, Gandiva Dara. Now he's saying, he replied, he said, they have not, they have not understood the conclusion accepted by all the Mahajans. 
they means those that say that gyan, those that say, those that argue that gyan is higher or greater than bhakti, they obviously are ignorant or unaware of the conclusive evidence of all the greatest thinkers, the greatest mahajans. And he goes on. Keshavarti. Veda Shastri Mahajana Patase Laoya Tahachari Abhode Se Anya Patejhai. The Vedic literature, Veda Shastra, teaches one to accept the path of the Mahajans. And the basis of all knowledge is Veda, Shrutis or Smritis, Puran. And those Vedas from which you'll get the knowledge about Karma, Jnana, and Bhakti because that's what's there, Samanavideya and Priyochan. You'll receive knowledge of bhakti and yoga and karma and jnana from the Vedas. There's no other source of these knowledges in the purest, complete form. And those same Shastras which are giving you that knowledge say to understand this knowledge and the descent of this knowledge and the dissemination of this knowledge is based on the Mahajans. Then they list the Mahajans. So the, the Vedic literature, <laughs> which, because our reference point here is which is higher, jnana or bhakti. So there must be a praman or an accepted universal praman or accepted universal standard reference. Standard books of knowledge is a phrase Prabhupada uses in purports of Bhagavad Gita. We must refer to the standard books of knowledge. Shruti, Shmati, Puranadi, Pancharatri, Gavinimbita. So therefore he's saying that. The Vedas, which is where we'll find the answer to your question, Mahaprabhu, whether Jnana is higher than bhakti. The Vedas say that to get any knowledge and to receive knowledge, we should not speculate, we should accept the opinion of the Mahajans. It's called parampara, guru, evam parampara praptam imam rajasya yuvadu sakalina mahata yoganasya pranam So it comes down. So the Vedas teach that one should accept the path of the Mahajans. Because first he says, those that say Jnana is higher than bhakti, they don't follow the Mahajans. So again, you can say that's your subjective statement, Keshav Bharti. Then he says, and who is saying who is saying that you should accept the Mahajans? I just said it, but the, Ved, the whole Veda Shastra says it. Veda Shastra Mahajan Patla. He said we should accept, we should lauya, we should accept the path and path and conclusion and teachings of the Vedic Mahajans. Then he goes on to say, the next question is, well, who are they? <laughs> See the logic of the of how it's th he said it. He says, Katakshane vicharya. When he heard the question, he thought for a while. And it lined up all his <laughs> arguments in a very systematic way. Tum, 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 tum. You see the flow of the systematic thinking of the Guru's answer? First he makes a statement. As a standard in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's preaching or anyone's, you make your statement in your own language and you back with Praman. You speak in Hindi or English or whatever, Bengali, Sanskrit, and then you quote the, the Vedic Shastra. So then he says, and he says, you have to accept the Mahajans. The Vedic literature said we should, the Vedas say we should accept the Mahajans. And the Vedas will tell you who the Mahajans are. And who are they? Brahma Shiva Narada, Prahlada Shukha Vyas, Sanak Adi Kari Yudhishthira Panchadhash, Priya Vratta Pritu Dhruva, Akra Udhav, Mahajana Hina Nama Jatta Achesab. He lists the Mahajans. Brahma, Shiva, Narada, Prahlad, Shukadev, Vyas, the Chatush Kumar, headed by Sanak, the Panch Pandavas, headed by Yudhishthir, Priyavrata, Prithu, Dhruva, Akura, and Udav are all addressed as Mahajans. Bhakti se maghena sabe, Ishvara charan, Jnana barahaile bhakti, Mage ki karan. They, they always beg they, all these great Mahajans, they always beg for, beg for Vishnu Bhakti, devotional service at the Lord's lotus feet. If Gyan was greater, why are they begging God for Bhakti? <laughs> because that means that that's the greatest thing. They may, they may be Gyanis in their own right. They may have Gyan. Some of them are like that. Like the, Shanta, the Chattis Kumar are considered Gyanis. But they're begging the Lord for devotion. As soon as they have any contact, with the Lord, then they beg for devotion. Smell the Tulsi from his lotus feet, and so many examples. Vina vicharya ki se sava mahajan, mukti chari bhakti kene magi anakshan. So he's asking questions. Why, this is Kesha Bharti replying to Mahabharu, why would these great mahajans reject liberation, which is the goal of jnana, 
and always, always beg for bhakti unless they've carefully considered the matter very deeply with their greatest intelligence and vichara. Purport. The path of the Mahajans, as we just mentioned, Shiva, Prahlad, Brahma, Narad, and the purport of the Vedic literatures is Vishnu-shuddha-bhakti, Shud-bhakti. If Gyan was superior to Bhakti, these Mahajans would never have accepted the path of Bhakti Marg. They would have remained Gyanis, because many of them, as we know, they were Gyanis. Like Shukadeva Goswami was a Brahma Gyani. And then he heard those two verses from the disciples of Yasa Muni, Aho Bhakti, Kalakutastanam, or something, and then some verse about the compassion. You know, the one verse explained the compassion of Krishna that he gave a witch Putana who came to poison him with all this Kalakuta poison on her Kalakuta poison on her breast. He gave her the position of a Dhatri in the spiritual world. And that's his compassion. And the other verse they recite is about the Sundari or beauty of Krishna. Parhapitam Vara Natabara. Yeah, Karnya, that one. This is a beautiful form, the Rupa Madhuri of Krishna. And he heard that, he said, Ah, va, va. And he just ran in the direction of that sweet sound, because Namru Gun Lila. Just by hearing the sound of those verses, he got the uh, Anugraha of Krishna came through one verse, then the beauty, the Anugraha melted his heart, then the beauty captured his mind. One verse melted his heart with the Anugraha Shakti of Krishna describing his compassion. When he heard the other verse, and that kept enchanted his mind, and once your heart and your mind are stolen, you're on your way, you're running. So he ran back to the yesterday. Give me more, honey, you are on your, acha. Janmad yasya yataha hitarashate shri gyasura. And he went on to speak the Bhagavatam. So there, they, so he was, he was a jnani, because that's a whole list here. Some of them were jnani, some of them, um, were not, but they all begged for bhakti. They gave that up, so this this is the higher consideration. Sabara vachane purani praman kivara magali brahma ishvara stan. All the statements of these great mahajans are supported by the puranas. What benediction did Brahma ask from the Lord? Who can be more of a jnani than Brahma? Who can be more intelligent than Brahma? Who knows more about this world than Brahma? As I probably use analogy, someone who built the television or designed the television, he knows everything about how it works and how it's, because he made it. So Brahma knows everything about this world from the atom to the, from the molecule and the atom to the, the uh, galaxies. And he says in his Brahma Stuti, which is the next verse, that he quoted, so what, what benediction did Brahma, because Brahma, as you know, when he purloined, purloined Krishna's coward boys and calves, and they're taking lunch in Bojantali, or Bojantali, and then Krishna expanded himself in all these Vishnu Murtis, and, and Brahma became totally bewildered. Brahma Vimohan Lila, then he appeared to the Lord and offered his famous stutis in chapter 14. Tarastame not the Sabori Bhago Pave Travan Yatra Tiva Tirascham Yenaha Eko Pi Bhavat Jananam Rutra Nisheve Tavapara Pavam. My dear Lord Krishna, I therefore pray to be so fortunate that in this life as Brahma or any other life, wherever I may take birth, I may be counted as one of your devotees. I pray that wherever I may be, even among animal species, I can engage in bhakti at your lotus feet. So here's Brahma. <laughs> Brahma's paying, praying that <laughs> he's afraid because he's thinking, what a grave offense. Krishna, <laughs> the boys are taking, they're sharing rasgulas and samosas, and they're just, Krishna's just offering it to one of the coward boys, one of half bitten samosa and then suddenly the coward boy disappears. <laughs> what where'd he go? You know, if someone imagine you're having lunch and someone breaks up your lunch party and takes away your friends right in the middle of the conversation. Who was that? Who did that? Couldn't be anything more offensive. So Brahma was fearing some severe reaction and reprisal for his uh apparat and offense to the Lord. So he said so he said, I don't know 
Um, he's saying here, he's saying, I therefore pray to be so fortunate in this life as Lord Brahma or another life wherever I may take my birth. I'm Brahma now, but as a result of this, you may, you know, become a, a Kita, Kita General Hao. Kita General Hao, become an insect. I, but let me be an insect in the home of one of your devotees so I can nibble on the Mahabharasadi drop on the floor. I pray that I pray that wherever I may be, even among an animal, I'll be engaged in bhakti. Like that dog, there's one dog, and uh, Nityananda Baitak. <laughs> I remember years ago. There's a lot of dog guitar here, <laughs> and it's Radhakund, because uh, they comprise 15% of the population of Radhakund as dogs. I was calculating the other day, there's, there's about 100 people in this mula, and about 20 of the residents here are, are dogs. So it's 20%, 15% dog. Then it's not official count, but so now it, this dog would just be wandering around the Prakamarg, and every evening was evening Arctic, Sunday Arctic at the uh, uh, Prana Prachin Radhakupina Temple, where Nityananda's Baitak is. He, this dog, sometimes this dog would be sitting in a temple, and I remember once uh, it was it was a black dog, and it was night. I got crowded, and I was just waiting for evening Arctic, and the and I stepped back like this, and then. You know, I, I bumped in, I just kind of, this dog was sleeping, I kind of stepped on the dog a little bit. I said, oh, excuse me. And then the dog woke up or whatever. Oh, and as soon as they started ringing their bell in the RT, then the dog stood up like this, looked at the DDs. Oh, I started singing, bang, bang, bang. You know, wh the whole time the RT was going on, he sang, and then he sat back down. I think I told the story before. So then I felt, oh, this is a Barabakta, a Barabakta dog very big devotee, I made a fence. So I, w I immediately went out and bought some biscuits. And I came back and I paid a basin <laughs> to the dog and I prayed the dog to please forgive me for stepping on his feet and fed the dog. And then the Baba, old Baba that's still there, whatever his name is, he came over and he said, this dog is for seven years, is every RT coming singing for Gopinath. Probably they don't live much more than 10 years, so. Who can understand? So this, he's saying, even if I'm born in a dog at Radhakun, let, let me sing in the evening Arctic. For an entire pleasure. Kiva Brahma Janma Kiva Harjata Tata Dasaha Yena Tama Seviye So this is uh, Kesha Bharti is setting this prayer by Lord Brahma as a representative as the Adi Adi Mahajan, because he, about 12 Mahajans or more were listed here as the great distributors of Vedic wisdom, and many of them that he mentioned were previously Gyanis themselves. So by their very example of the Mahajans, whom we should follow according to the Vedas, Mahajan Yena Kata Sabhanta, we should follow them, and those very Mahajans, even if they were, even if they were involved or interested or following the Gyan Marg, they gave it up to follow Bhakti. They even prayed for it. And, and to be, have any kind of bhakti. I don't want to be a jnani or a karmi or a yogi in any life, even if I'm an animal, as long as I'm a bhakta animal, a bhakta dog, or born in the home of a devotee, then that's fine for me. This, this, these various points, extremely, uh, very conclusive evidence about how bhakti is certainly, how can you refute this? I say, no, this devotee gave it up and became a jnani, or the Vedas say that jnana is higher than bhakti, or all the Mahajans say that jnana, that, that's not what the opposite thing is being said here. He mata yata mahajana sampradhai, sabe sakalachari bhakti matrachai. In this way, all the Mahajans and their followers desire only devotional service and reject everything else. And now he quotes Vishnu Puran. He quoted Srimad Bhagavatam, now Vishnu Puran 12018. Nati Yoni Yeshu Yeshu Prajam Yaham Teshu Teshvachuta Bhaktir Achutastu Sadatvayi O Lord Achuta, wherever I may be born, among the thousands of species of life, may I always have unflinching devotion for you. I don't know who is saying that, but these are obviously some individuals praying to the Lord. Sukama fala nirdishtam 
yam yam jonim brajam yam tasyam tasyam <coughs> rishikesha toyi bhakti jidastuna Allah rishikesha whatever species of life I take birth as a result of my past activities let me always remain fixed in your devotional service again this must I'm not sure where that's from now Nanda Maharaj and other cowards speak. So he's citing Mahajans, now he's citing Parishads. Of course, there's a, they're subjective, but at least they're saying this opinion. This is Nanda Maharaj and the representative coward men. And this is an interesting chapter. It's in Brahma Gita. Uh, they are speaking with Uddhav when he was about to return to Mathura and concluding a stay there. And they were praying to him for a benediction because Uddhav himself was a great Mahajan and recognizing that such Rihaspati, such Shishya Rihaspati, and the son of Devabhaga. Devabhaga is a brother of Vasudev, so he's a cousin brother of Krishna, Uddha. <laughs> and uh, they, Nanaraj, they, <laughs> they just thought they were <laughs> simple coward men. They say, oh, Uddhava, you're Uddhava Mahasha, and you're the, you're the minister of the, the government, and Ugrasen, and Krishna's best friend, and so then they say, Kamabir Brahmayamanam Yatra Kapashvi Rechaya Mangalachari Teradhani Ratirna Krishna Ishvare. Let me turn on that light again. Let's try this light now. Nanda Maharaj said, Wherever we are made to wander about in this world by the Supreme Lord's will, in accordance with the reactions to our fruit of work, may our good works and charity always grant us love for Lord Krishna. And so they're speaking as if they're conditioned souls in a samsara, but at least that prayer would be suitable for any of us. Wherever I am made to wander about in this world by the will of God, in accordance to the my karma fall, be it punya or pap, Whatever I do, may my good works and charity always result in bhakti. Now he speaks. This is a concluding point he makes. Ate vasava mate bhakti se pradhan mahajana patta sava shastra praman. Keshabharti replied Maha to Mahaprabhu. Therefore, the conclusion is the path of bhakti followed by the Mahajans is the best in every respect. This is confirmed in all the scriptures. The Bhakti Pradhan. Pradhan. It is the main or the chief path. And Sarva Shastra Praman. All the Praman are the Mahajans. What's, what else is there? <laughs> There's the Shastras and the Mahajans and the Charyas. Otherwise, outside of that, it's just a vast ocean of mental speculation. And, he's, and he, to prove that, he cites the Mahabharata. And one more verse, he says, Tarko pratishta shuti, Tarko pratishta shuti yo vibhinna, Nasavrishya yasya matam vibhinnam, Tamasya tattvam hitam gohayam, Mahajano yena katasa panta. <coughs> so if you don't follow the Mahajan part, and you don't follow... Uh, Shuti Shastra Praman, then you're left with the mind. <laughs> many men, many minds. <laughs> Tarko Pratishta, <laughs> let's fight. Tarko Pratishta, let's establish, let's fight and establish my, I'm me first, me second, <laughs> you never. Dry arguments are inconclusive. A great personality whose opinion does not differ from others is not considered a great sage. Simply by studying the Vedas, which are variegated, Shuti Vibhina, one cannot come to the right path by which religious principles are understood. Why? Because Tattva Dharma, Dharma Tattva, is hiding. Where is it hiding? Nihitam Gohayam in the realized souls, in the hearts of the realized souls. The essential secrets of Dharma, secret 
knowledge of the Vedas. The solid truth, a very interesting Prabhupada's phrase, or excuse me, this phrase, the solid truth of religious principles is hidden in the heart of an unadulterated, self-realized person. Consequently, the Shastras can affirm one should accept whatever progressive path the Mahajans advocate. That's the answer to the question, which is higher, better, greater, jnana or bhakti. Bhakti bara shuni prabhu, bara tira muke, hari bari gajite lagila prema suke. Hearing this wonderful answer from the mouth of his guru, Sanyas Guru Kesha Bharati, that bhakti is greater, Karuna Mahaprabhu loudly chanted the name Hari in ecstatic love, Prema Sukhe, in all the happiness of love. Hari Bali, Hari, 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 always Hari, always Hari, Hari, Hari. Prabhupada Yami Kataknine Pritivite, Takilane Satya Kahila Tomate. Mahaprabhu said, I will stay for some more time in this world. I am telling you the truth. Jadi to me jnana bara, bali te amare, pavishit atma aji, tabe simujavitare. If you would have told me that jnana was greater, I would have entered the ocean today. Samujavitare. I would have entered into the ocean. Purport. Sri Gaurasundar said, I have stayed in this material world for all this time for one purpose, just to establish the supremacy of bhakti. That was his, he said. Then, Bhakti Santa Sarasri says, if in his position as a guru, Keshava Bharati would have minimized bhakti, then Gorasundar would have wound up his pastimes by entering the ocean. Very interesting. <laughs> they say if someone commits an offense to the Lord, then you should leave that place immediately. Offend the Lord or his devotees. Leave that place immediately or give up your life. So it's certainly an offense is to the Lord to say that Gyan is higher than Bhakti. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if he had heard that, he would con that would be considered an offense, because it's wrong. It's not true. It's not based on Mahajan. It's not based on Shastras. So it's apasadanta. It's, it's a lie. It's offensive. It's wrong. Because that's uh, insulting the Lord to say that because Bhakti is... Who is Bhakti? Bhakti is Radharani. <laughs> it's a, Supreme form of the worshipper. Uh, Baj means the worshipper. The Bajate. Baj. So he said, I would have, I would have ended, given up my life right then and there. But he didn't. How did he respond to the answer given by his guru? Santo She Dharena Prabhu. Guru Gurura Charan. Guru O Prabhure Namaskari Pritaman. In great satisfaction, Guranga caught hold of Kesha Bharati's feet. Guru Charan. Santosha Dharina, in great, complete satisfaction, he held the lotus feet of his guru. And his guru affectionately offered his obeisances to the Lord. <laughs> That's interesting. The guru is offering obeisances to the disciple, but <laughs> in this case, the disciple is God. Prabhupada Yara Mukhe. Actually, we heard, I don't know if it's, I, it's true, but we heard, I don't know if we read it, it was, maybe you've heard also, the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, I think it was not every disciple, must be select disciples, I would imagine, because everything is not, everything is very high, in this terms of Vaishnava behavior, there's lots of nuances and, and types of reciprocation that one is supposed to learn by observing and by studying Shastras, how to respect one that's not initiated, but he's Vaishnava Praya, how to respect one who's initiated, but not following, how to respect someone who's on the highest level of bhakti, there's different. There's a hierarchy of interactions and respect. So I've heard this uh, point that when disciples would come to meet Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, they would offer obeisances, and he would offer his obeisances in return. Has anyone heard that? And I vaguely remember hearing one discussion on this point. 
from one of his own disciples, senior disciples, sannyasi. And he said that was a select, as I always would be imagined, it was a selected uh, disciples. They were on a very high rank, many of sannyasis, etc. They were. I don't think it was categorically every every disciple of the thousands of disciples even wouldn't get much done if he was offering obeisances all day long. But the point is that this is uh, in this case the disciple is God. So, Prabhupada yare muke nahi bhakti kata tapashika sutra tyaga. Tarasava Brita Brita. Mahabhu said, For anyone who does not discuss bhakti, Krishna Kata, giving up the Shika and Brahman thread and engaging in austerity are all useless. So someone another Shika and Brahman thread are given up when one becomes a Bhajanandi. All these things. Shika, Brahman thread and Tapa. When you read about the Sadgo Swamis, except for some exceptions, that sometimes they say that Raghunath Bhatta, Gopal Bhatta didn't give up their shikas, or, I know. But when one uh, becomes Paramahamsa, Paramahamsa is considered beyond all the varnas and ashrams. There's four stages of renunciation, sannyas, and the first is Kutichak, then Bahadak, and Paribhachak, then Paramahams. So in Paramahamsa, then one is you know, already gone beyond the other three levels, and there's no more any designation. Paramahamsa is also equated with Babaji. What they call Babaji. And Babaji's generally have no Sikha, no Brahman thread, and they perform Tapasya austerity. <coughs> and uh, Nityananda broke Lord Chaitanya's sannyas danda in three. He says, Why are you carrying this danda? Because the Paramahansas, the Babaji's, don't carry the danda. Because they're, uh, danda represents the varnas or the ashram of sannyas. So they're Paramahamsa, they're gliding beyond all the asanas. So, Bhakti Sons is purported. People cultivate Krishna consciousness who do not discuss topics of bhakti, their activities like austerities, vows, and accepting sannyas after giving up shikha and brahman thread are all useless. Bhakti Vina Prabhura Jignasa Nahiara Bhakti Rasamaya Sri Chaitanya Avatar. Sri Chaitanya Dev did not discuss anything but bhakti. Because Chaitanya is the incarnation of the Malas of devotional service, Bhakti Rasamai. Ratri Dina Ekana Janena Bhaktigan Savada Karena Nritya Kirtana Garjan. Nritya Kirtan Garjan. Savada. Forgetting whether it was day or night, the devotees constantly engaged in loud chanting and dancing. Purport, very interesting purport. It's one of my very well used phrases. Also, everything's interesting. <laughs> let's let's change and let's introduce a new phrase. This is a significant purport. We should hear very attentively. Sri Gorasunda never approves of any irrelevant rituals devoid of bhakti. Just think of all. Just think of all the rituals that are go on in India in the name of religious rites and rituals. There's hundreds of them, hundreds of them. This puja and that puja and this ritual and that ritual. And so Lord Chaitanya, all he did was talk, all, the only thing, all he did day and night was either talk, talk about Bhakti Rasa Tattva, Harikata Bhakti Rasa Tattva, or loud, chant and dance, and chant lo loudly and dance. That is it. <laughs> and this is this is Shuddha Bhakti, Anyavila Shuddhashun, Karmaki and Anavritam, no covering. Because now it's Navaratri and so many people do so many things and whatnot, <laughs> isn't it? 